right, so, Vigna Alberdi. I've got the Vigna Alberdi by popular demand, as in a friend of mine who I drink wine in the shed with and has a nice wine collection, has brought me two Alberdis to drink in our weekend wine sessions in the shed. And for good reason, it is a great wine. And also because he knows that La Rioja Alta, not the region or area of the region, but the actual vineyard La Rioja Alta, has had pretty much every one of its wines in my top wine list at some point in time. Indeed, 904 was possibly my favorite Rioja for longer than probably any other Rioja. Which, yeah, it's, it's not something that, it's not like the Oscars. Yeah, there's nobody going, yeah, it's not up there like, you know, 96 points in, in, from Parker or Tim Atkins, but you know, it's, uh, it's high praise from me anyway. So we just better get to it. And the, the reason is for this is uh, not only have we got, well, they got the 2018 before I was drinking the 15, which is very good. The 18, we'll get onto that in a minute. But I've got these big bottles. I've been buying these big bottles along with other magnums that we've been drinking. We've been drinking some very special wines. You've seen probably from some of the other videos. We've had the Tondonias. We've had, uh, you know, the, 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 the amazing wines. But the wine that people keep coming back to is this one. And the reason for it is that it has that wonderful thing of wonderful things, which is the licorice umami. Now, I don't know if it is either licorice or umami, but I'm using this as a phrase to describe that wonderful, spicy, earthy, woody fruitiness that makes you want to keep drinking another Rioja and another Rioja and another Rioja. Uh, in the same way that I remember having once a wonderful truffle menu in Nobu and for the week or weeks even afterwards, I understood how they trained the little piggies to find those truffles. I was one of those little piggies. Every time even people opened like a packet of prawn cocktail crisps, I was like, is that truffle? And then obviously disappointment in that it wasn't truffle. I then bought truffle oils and went, hmm, the smell is there. And then, yeah. And yeah, I mean, short of going and having another truffle menu with you know black cod and wagyu beef, and even then it may disappoint because you know these things are in your memory. However, this does have licorice umami. It has that wonderful flavor. And the reason is because it is just a wonderful wine and it's not an expensive wine at all. It is almost, I'd say, something that a lot of people could call a daily drinker. But let's see what Vivino has to say. So I don't normally read the reviews, but the first review I really like, um, I won't say who it's from because I don't know if that's a thing that I can do or not, and I haven't had time to investigate it. I think I most probably can, but um, let me know if you think in the comments I should name and shame people. But this is not name and shame, this is actually really good. I think this may be as good as the 2015, I agree. But it's young yet, I agree. It feels a little less balanced right now with a tougher edged finish, absolutely. Banana, now the banana hits a nail on the head. If you've ever been in a zoo and seen primates eating bananas and thought, I shall have a go, you've enjoyed a lovely banana, you bite into the skin and go, ew, that's not for me. What are you thinking, you crazy monkey? It's not quite as bad as that here, but you know when you, a wine is still a little bit green, some people have that reaction. I just go, mm, nice green wine unless it's like really green, you know, like those Bordeaux that need another 10 years before they're approachable. This has that kind of, yeah, and I think we'll get to this in a second because um, when we get to the, the wider comments, caramel, vanilla, and cherry. Absolutely, there's a caramel. I think the caramel is probably, I should have added that to the umami definition, but let's get into it. So it's, it's bold, tannic, and acidic, not right off the scale, but up there like most, uh, Crianthus should be, it's dry but not bone dry, like reservas, etc., like a Crianthus should be. And obviously oak, vanilla and tobacco is 390 mentions and everybody's pr quite right to do so. But then it goes to cherry, red fruit rather than the blackberry because it's a 2018 and as the other person said, it's young still. And strawberry, again, it's a, an acidic sort of what I'd call a greener fruit um, and very indicative of what this wine is. Leather smoke, earthy, oh, it's just lovely. 
It really is. Plum, blackberry, and dark fruit. So it is, it is there, but it's, it's not quite out yet. Um, but, you know, I mean, everybody wants a glass of this and another glass and another glass. Um, now, pepper, licorice, and rosemary. I love the rosemary comment. So rosemary is a slightly divisive um, spice, I know, but this does have that kind of, yeah, it's, it's got, and again, I think it's the greenness. This 2018 will probably last a long while. It's 14 and a half percent, as you would expect. Toast marzipan nutty. You see, these are complex flavors you would not expect from a bottle of wine. This was 19 euros for two bottles. So it's under 10 euros a bottle, if you work it out that way. The bottle price I've seen vary. Um, it's about 13, something like that, in most of the shops that I've seen. Um, so it's not the cheap everyday drinker, but it, you know, if you buy it in the Magnum, obviously, you know, knock yourself out. Not that I would do that, obviously. Cheese cream banana. Oh, dear God. I mean, I get the banana thing. I don't know why it's attached to cheese and cream. Please, somebody tell me, what is all these cheese? Well, it's only 17 notes. The same as toast, marzipan, and nutty aging notes. Tomato, hay, and bell pepper. We haven't seen bell pepper for a while, but it does have that crisp vegetal note. And I suppose, again, because it's, it's a young wine. Apple, definitely. Blood orange and citrus, yep, and pineapple. It does have a little bit of funkiness. And we like a bit of funkiness. This is absolutely, even if you get it on your upper lip, it is an absolutely amazing wine. And it is on Vivino, it is a 4.1 Vivinos, which from 149 rating, I have previously rated this four for the 15. I've given this 18 a four and a half because A, I'm feeling generous. It is the beginning of 2022 and Lord knows we need some optimism for this year. But yeah, I really like this and I cannot ignore the fact that we have had some lovely wines, even in big magnum bottles that are shiny and whatever, and in wooden cases that, you know, people go, ooh, that's a thing. But, and it's not just people from Birmingham because that's a higher pitched, ooh. But uh, no, it's, 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 it's it, everybody just loves this wine and I can see why. It is absolutely amazing. Go and get yourself a bottle of Alberdi. 2018. If you can't get the 2015 and drink it in the shed with a grumpy old friend. And on that note, have a wonderful 2022 that we have just started and I shall catch you in the next one.